Welcome back to Friday Beyond Spotlights. This is Patrick Zhang. I'm a local businessman, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. On Friday Beyond Spotlights, we invite prominent guests to share their unique insights into current affairs, business, innovation, and culture. Today, we're very pleased to have Dr. Rex Aoyoung, Chairman of MTR Corporation. Rex has been actively serving the public sector for many years, including in the education, charity, financial, and insurance fields. For the past three years, he has also taken up a leadership role of the major public transport operator in Hong Kong. That is definitely one of the most challenging and exciting experiences among his long resume of public services. Rex, welcome to Friday Beyond Spotlights. Hello, hello, Patrick. Thank you for having me here today. Rex, should we start with MTR? MTR is the largest public transport operator in Hong Kong, carrying millions of passengers every day. As chairman of MTR, what do you think contribute to the success of MTR? Well, thank you for the question. Uh, MTR has been in operation for over 40 years. And in the last many, many years, uh, our colleagues have been accumulated many years of experience. So I believe that there are many reasons for the success or wherever the position we're at today. However, I can think of three that, that sort of pops up in my mind. Uh, first of all, uh, it is the work ethics mm -hmm. of our colleagues. Uh, you'll be amazed how hardworking our colleagues are. In Hong Kong, we do have about 17,000 employees and 50,000 worldwide, and all are really working very hard every day to serve the public. The second point I would like to mention is our business model. We do have a unique model called rail and property model, of which uh, it has been identified as one of the successful uh, business model for rail operators worldwide. And third, uh, also I, I, I find it interesting that MTR has very well developed policy uh, procedures, of which is very useful because our employees can follow it very diligently uh, for example, a FAM system, what we call fair adjustment mechanism, uh, which is a way to ensure that we got a steady inflow of revenue to support our maintenance work. Rex, you talked about high quality of the railway service. You talked about um, excellent customer experience. Um, while railway systems are complex and sophisticated and passengers' requests are ever more demanding every day, how can MTR maintain its world-class service? Uh, our colleagues on a day-to-day -day basis are upgrading our maintenance schedule, uh, making sure that all the trains are being run on time. And in fact, I think we pride ourselves in this 99.9% .9 punctuality ratio, which is the top of the world. A uh, second is technology. I think one of the things that we, we learned over the last many years, that technology has advanced to a stage of which it can help our colleagues to do the job better. It is not to replace our employee, but to make sure that they can do a better job in a shorter period of time. Actually, the MTR businesses are much more than just merely railway service. Can you expand a little bit more on that point? Our core business is still the rail business. To ensure that we have a steady inflow of revenue, we have to look for other ways to support the operation. For example, we are quite involved in the real estate development and in the Hong Kong area. At the same time, as you may notice, when you walk down a subway station, we do have a number of shops of which it will generate rental income for us. At the same time, we do have other shopping malls in Hong Kong, of which also is a way to ensure that we have a steady revenue income inflow for us to operate our, our rail business. Re operating a rail business is very expensive. I mean, one may not understand because as a passenger, uh, he or she will only see the train come and go. However, to ensure the train is running on time and safely, there's a lot of work behind the scene. Uh, one would appreciate very much if you come down to a train station in the middle of the night after the train stops and see how much work our employees have to do to ensure the train will be run the next day safely so that we can continue to provide the, the good service to the Hong Kong public. The recent policy address has proposed a number of local and cross-border projects. Um, what benefits would these new railways bring to the local economy? Well, we support the, the policy address in, a, in an angle 
that it strengthened the connectivity between Hong Kong and the mainland. Uh, when you look at the policy address, particularly in the northern metropolis area, uh, all it will see, we will see is a lot more new infrastructure to be built and with the purpose of supporting economic growth. And we strongly believe that the Greater Bay Area is one way that Hong Kong has to play a very vital part in the overall development. So from MTR perspective, uh, we highly endorse and support this new policy address. Um, I want to take it even further. So I understand, uh, apart from the local business, uh, you are now diversifying internationally to overseas, to Australia, even to Europe. And impressively, MTR is actually operating the new Elizabeth Line in London. Um, what is the competitive advantage of MTR going to all these uh, international locales? MTR over the last 40 plus years has accumulated a lot of experience from, to start from planning, designing, building, uh, commissioning, uh, managing, and also operating. So all this from end-to-end -end experience had made us a good choice for outside companies to come to us. We are very fortunate that we have operations in the, the places that you just mentioned. And all these, we are so far, we're very happy that we are providing very good service to the local markets over there, and the local partners are very pleased with us so far. MTR is also promoting Hong Kong and Hong Kong's brand globally while providing quality service. Um, can you share a little bit more on how MTR is telling the world the good stories of Hong Kong? Obviously, uh, Hong Kong being a financial, international financial center requires a lot of supporting facilities. Uh, luckily, Hong Kong has a very good airport system of which it can connect Hong Kong to many places around the world. At the same time, we also have facilities like convention centers and excellent telecommunication work in Hong Kong. So when you put all together, truly, Hong Kong is a place for business. Hong Kong is a place for international scene. So henceforth, MTR is playing a role to support Hong Kong being sort of continuing to be the international center of Asia. Rex, having served as chairman of the MTR for two terms, what is the most satisfying task you have done so far? The one that truly I, I remember a lot uh, is back in 2020, uh, myself and the board and management and colleagues spent a lot of time discussing and designing the new corporate strategy. Uh, being the largest sort of transport operator in Hong Kong, we also have to be social conscious. The, the strategy that we came up with has three pillars. The, the first pillar is to ensure that Hong Kong will continue to be our core business, the rail business, but at the same time, we continue to look for opportunities to further enhance our service. Second pillar is on our mainland business and the international business. Uh, we also have done a lot of research to ensure that we can revise and fine tune our strategy in those locations. And third uh, is where I, I find it very interesting is on technology. Uh, we spend a lot of time discussing how can we leverage on technology to help our employees to do a better job. The current environment we're doing business may be what we are do good at. However, the environment is changing very quickly. New technology can quickly change the world. The message we, we we send to all our colleagues is to ensure that when, when you are doing your job, don't stop thinking of what can you do better by leveraging on new technology. So that the new corporate strategy is something that, that I feel very proud of, uh, something that I'm very sort of uh, satisfied uh, that we have strong support from our board members and management team and our colleagues overall and we are now in the middle of the execution. What measures has MTR taken during the pandemic to overcome the challenges? Well, during the pandemic, uh, in addition to sort of looking after our employees, we also have done a lot to service our public. For example, we have offered fair discount uh, to the Hong Kong public during a difficult time. Uh, at the same time, we are also uh, has given rent, rental concessions to the shops and the shopping malls that we manage. And plus, in addition, uh, we also have donated 
uh, face masks and all kinds of things to support the needy. So overall, MTR has tried to play a part to ease the pain that the Hong Kong public was going through during the pandemic time. So Rex, what advice would you give to young people to prepare for their future employment? After my short time in here, uh, one, a couple of things I, I see is if you are very interested in serving the public, if you are a very hardworking individual and not to worry about working night shifts at the same time, uh, MTR is a good place. Because uh, again, I want to emphasize that what most of the people see MTR in front is just a train come to the station and leave the station. But there's a lot of hard work behind the scene. There's a lot of engineering requirements. We, we employ a high number of engineers uh, in Hong Kong of uh, which they perform different tasks. So all these things create an environment of which they can come and do a good job, but at the same time, they continue to learn new things. So I, I highly recommend the young generation to consider joining NTR as a future employer. Thank you, Rex. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to Friday Beyond Spotlights. We have with us today, Dr. Rex Aoyoung, the chairman of MTR Corporation. Rex has been actively serving the public sector for many years, including in the education, charity, financial, and insurance fields. For the past three years, he has also taken up a leadership role of the major public transport operator in Hong Kong. That is definitely one of the most challenging and exciting experiences among his long resume of public services. Who is Rex Aoyoung behind the spotlights? Who or what defining moments in his life shaped him into who he is today? Would we get to learn his life model or life ambitions? In this show and tell segment, we shall go behind and beyond glaring spotlights as our special guest today, Rex Aoyoung, shows us an item that has a special meaning in shaping him into who he is today with fiercely strong Lion Rock can-do spirit. And perhaps we will get to journey back in time with Rex to experience some special moments and see how certain moments might have shaped him and may shape us today. So Rex, could you show us your special item? <laughs> okay, what I have with me today is this little uh, called tooting toy. Uh, it's a toy given to me by a friend and since then, it has been sitting on my working desk. The reason why I like it very much is I allow me to do a little bit. Maybe you can see this. What, 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 the way it works is no matter what you do with the toy, it will still stand back up. And, and the message, I really like it, is because this truly symbolizes the Hong Kong spirit, uh, particularly to the young generation. Uh, as a young uh, person coming up from school, like myself, uh, in our career, we always have ups and downs. Uh, we, we also sort of during ups time, we were also happy, whatever. But during down time, uh, sometimes it is not easy for somebody to accept. My message is to the young generation is this is normal. Uh, one has to learn along the way. And in fact, I think experience means, okay, you will see successes and you see failures. And this particular toy, I like it very much, is because it's the message I want to give, uh, is whether it's your personal life or your career, everybody will bump into problems, okay? And yet, when you face, are being faced with an issue or a problem, doesn't mean you give up. Uh, in fact, another message I like to say is, uh, in my previous career, uh, previous life, I call it, uh, I travel a lot, a and often uh, every month I have to travel long distance, 15-hour flight. And during the 15-hour flight, it's very common that you bump into turbulence. But bumping into turbulence doesn't mean, okay, you turn back. So in fact, I think also it's similar to this little toy I have in front of me here, is when you are faced with issues and problems, don't give up, okay? Face with it, deal with it and eventually better times will come. 
I always say that uh, half full is always better than half empty. Uh, this is something I highly encourage our young generation to think about. Uh, because during the career, during the personal life, they, they, will, they will be faced with some issues that they may not know how to deal with it. But not knowing how to deal with it doesn't mean you give up. So in my mind, and in fact, during my 40 plus years of career, I'm sure that I have bumped into many problems and you can see all my scars in my hand. But that does not mean, okay, I give up. I always look at myself in the mirror and say, what can I do better tomorrow? So kind of the right attitude and the right perspective are all very, very important. Absolutely. Rex, in your own career, whether it's in the public service or on the business side, um, are there individuals or episodes in your life that you think you were very fortunate or somebody has really helped you out that you can share with us? There are many situations I can think of uh, that when I'm in a very difficult position, uh, I have friends or colleagues that were at office uh, giving me good advices, uh, particularly when I first joined the workforce uh, back in the good old days. Uh, as a young person coming out from school, obviously uh, there are tasks that I have never dealt with before, of which I don't know what to do. So I have, lucky me, uh, I have colleagues in office who are a few years seniors of me, are willing to give me opinions or advices and say, what about this? Have you thought about this? Uh, one, one person I, I, I have to say I'm very fortunate to have is when I was working overseas back then, uh, I have a, a manager who is very considerate. Uh, he always sort of come to my desk and say, what have you learned today? And that really sticks in my mind that as a senior person, one of our job is to help the, the young generation to grow and learn. You must have also worked or have to deal with very difficult people. Any advice to our viewers out there how to deal with the more difficult or challenging either colleagues or, or bosses? Uh, you have to take a very positive frame of mind because in any difficult situation, uh, it would not help if both sides continue to stand on their own way and say, I'm right, you're wrong. Uh, just like any negotiation, okay? In any negotiation, if you, in my mind, if you are not willing to give up something, give in something and take in something, there's no negotiation involved. So in my mind, the best way to do it is to keep a very positive frame of mind and deal with it. Rex, what strategies do you use to blow off steam, so to speak? Do you exercise? Do you meditate? Do you practice Tai Chi or any special advice you would give us? You, you, you'll be surprised what I, what I would answer you with. Uh, my, my way of releasing uh, pressure uh, is to watch uh, soccer on the weekend. Uh, I, I really enjoy watching uh, soccer on the weekend uh, because of my, my, I can put my mind off and say, no, I'm not going to think of work. I'm going to turn on the TV and watch a soccer game. So Rex, as we reflect on the past, think about what's happening in the world today and in Hong Kong, and gaze into the future, what's in store for us? One thing that is constant in my mind is change. Change will be the word we will see all the time. Uh, so, but at the same time, when I flip to the other side of the formula, change means opportunity. So again, leveraging on my positive attitude, while there will be difficulties in front of us, there will be challenges in front of us, but as long as we take a positive frame of mind and deal with it, there will be opportunities you can create for yourself. So my, my advice to, to the young generation, again, is don't give up, think positive, and think of other alternatives, because I'm sure that as you sit down and walk through sort of uh, your, your own thinking, there will be ways, uh, solutions that you can come up with that can help you to solve the problem. Thank you, Rex. You're welcome. Now we've come to our rapid fire question where we get up close and personal with our guests. So Rex, are you ready? Sure. I'm just gonna ask you a series of questions. You just say the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. What's your favorite food? Potato chips. Sports and exercises, what's your favorite sport? Uh, soccer. Last book you read? Uh, the World is Flat. What was your first job? 
summer job making hamburgers. Who do you admire most? My parents. Where would you bring new visitors to Hong Kong? Our 360 cable car. What's your favorite MTR station? Admiralty. Describe MTR in three words. Safe, reliable, and punctual. Any hidden talents you want to share? Ah, uh, yet to be discovered. Any talents you wish you have? Singing. What is your proudest moment? My graduation at university. The nicest thing someone has said to you? I'm a nice person and polite. The last thing you searched online? I was looking for a pair of shoes. What would be the title of your autobiography? There will be a better tomorrow. What qualities do you admire most in your parents? Hardworking. What is your biggest fear? Poor health. What advice would you give your younger self? I wish I can learn a lot more new technologies when I was young. What legacy do you wish to leave behind? Uh, a person uh, that has contributed to make Hong Kong a better place. How will Hong Kong look in five years' time? <sighs> Highly competitive. Thank you, Rex. Welcome. Rex, can you please share your suggestions or well wishes for Hong Kong? Well, my wish is I know that Hong Kong and all parts of the world are going through a difficult time because of COVID. The current situation will not be like this forever. So we all have to take a very positive attitude and think ahead. In my mind, I highly recommend people should take the time now to upgrade themselves, make sure that they learn as many new technology as possible and be ready for the future. But overall, I would close it by saying, don't give up. Thank you, Rex. Thank you for joining us on Friday Beyond Spotlights. We will see you next time. So Rex, thank you very much for joining us today at Friday Beyond Spotlights. It was my pleasure, but I have to go to another meeting. You're actually going to take the MTR? Yes, I do take MTR around in the city. It's safe, convenient and reliable. That's what makes Hong Kong a great city to live in. It's the best in the world. Thank you so much again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take bye -bye. care. Bye-bye.